Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to discuss spray adjuvants. Well, it's easy when we're talking about the weed of the week to say, well, use Callisto or use Flexstar or, or whatever product that it may be. But then you have to think about all the other stuff that goes in that spray tank to help those products do their job. So a lot of people will say, well, if we actually needed to throw something else with it, these chemical companies would put it right in the spray. Well, no, they're not going to. Because think about this for just a second. If I'm going to start tank mixing two or three different things, all of a sudden I might want to change my spray adjuvants because I've got all these things mixed together and if I put the wrong adjuvant in there I might really burn my crop. Just the same if let's say that I've got a hot dry summer and I've got a thick leaf cuticle I need a very aggressive spray adjuvant to burn through that leaf cuticle. Well if all I had was a minor or a mild spray adjuvant in with some of these different products and I mix them together that wouldn't work either. So there are a number of different reasons why I would want to blend my own spray adjuvants together, not to mention the fact that sometimes with some of these spray adjuvants, if they were to sit together with the herbicide for months at a time in a spray jug, that very well could degrade the herbicide. So for all those reasons, you're not going to find most of the spray adjuvants you need in the herbicides you buy. You need to add them to them. Well, I think it's important too that you're working with a good agronomist when you're mixing up these recipes that are going to go out in your field because the spray additives you choose are going to change depending on the time of day that you're going to spray and the weather that you're getting. And also they're going to change depending on which products are going to go into that mix. So if you're spraying on soybeans, for example, and you say, I have a terrible Palmer amaranth problem, I have to do the absolute best I can to control that weed and I'm going to spray Cobra. That's a different discussion than when you say, I'm gonna spray Cobra, I've got one or two tiny little weeds out there. I'm concerned about leaf burn on my soybeans. I really don't wanna burn my leaves. If I don't kill every last weed, it's not the end of the world. Well, there's gonna be two completely different recommendations for two farmers spraying the same exact product. If you're trying to avoid leaf burn, we're gonna go with something like non-ionic surfactant. We're gonna try and protect that crop keep the selectivity of the herbicide intact. If we've got a horrible weed problem and you say, I don't really care if I burn the crop a little bit, I absolutely have to kill those weeds. We're gonna go with a crop oil or methylated seed oil. That's gonna take away some of the selectivity of the herbicide, meaning that that herbicide is now not just going to ding the weeds up, it's also gonna ding the crop just a little bit, but the trade-off is you get a lot better weed control. Okay, so let's come back to the basics here. What we're talking about is with a non-ionic surfactant, that's just a spreader sticker. In other words, it's going to to help reduce the surface tension of the water droplet that you spray so it spreads out a little bit better over the leaf. When that happens, a farmer will get better spray coverage. He will also get a little bit better penetration into the leaf just because he's going to have that spray droplet sitting there for a little bit longer period of time. Now, if the farmer really wants leaf penetration, and especially when we have hotter, drier conditions, there gets to be a thick, waxy surface on the leaves of these weeds. It's called the leaf Cuticle. Again, it develops when it's hot and dry, and then the farmer will go with something like methylated seed oil or crop oil concentrate, and the purpose of those is not just to spread and stick, it's really to burn through that thick leaf cuticle. Well, if a farmer does this at the wrong time, when he has a thin leaf cuticle, he's gonna see a lot more leaf burn on the crop, he might get better weed control like Darren said, but he absolutely is going to see more leaf burn on the crop. Well, and does that make a difference in terms of yield if you burn the leaves a little bit on the crop? You know, it really depends on the stage of growth that crop is in, what's going out. If it's in the reproductive stages, we want to avoid any kind of stress on the plant that we can. Early in the season on a crop like soybeans, it really isn't going to make much difference in yield more times than not because that soybean plant is just going to continue growing. And even if like you got hail, for example, wiped out all the leaves on a soybean plant, early in the season, yet you didn't wipe out all the growing points, the soybean plant really isn't going to lose much yield. At least that's what the university data has been over the years. Other things that spray adjuvants can do is change the pH of the water and 
tie up some of the hard water ions like calcium, magnesium, and such, and that's called a sequestering agent. So sometimes you'll find those things that are mixed together with the spray adjuvant. So it's not just about spreading and sticking or leaf penetration, it's about some of these other qualities as well. Well, there's certainly a lot of things to talk about when we're looking at spray additives that farmers are putting into the tank. There are reasons for each one of those products that they're going to choose, whether it's to get better weed control, to be a little safer on the crop, or to adjust that pH of the water or something like that to make that particular product work better in the field. So there are a lot of choices that farmers will make. One of the considerations that they'll have too is, do they have our Weed of the Week? And can you identify this week's weed?